church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. First Corinthians 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I spoke, I thought, and I reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, when I grew up, I put away childish things. Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church. And the Corinthian church is made up of many people. Many uh, Jews, Gentiles, people from different backgrounds, people from different social, uh, different social levels, different economic statuses. Just a mixed bunch of people. Like our church, just a mixed bunch of people. A mixed tree, like my friend Jeremy would say. Hey, Jeremy, I'm lying. But Paul is expressing to them that even though we are different, we share one thing. We share a few things, but we share this one thing. We share a thing called process. Come on. We share a thing called process. No matter who you are, where you come from, the color of your skin, the language you speak, or even how long you've been walking with the Lord, you're going through a process. Look at your neighbor right now and just say, I'm going through it. I'm going through it. I'm going through it. Look at, now look at the other neighbor and say, I'm going through it. I'm going through it. Some of us in this room, some of us in this room are going through a natural process. We're growing up. We're moving from childhood to adolescence to youth to become a young man, like my father would say, young man, come over here, to adulthood. We're going through an educational process. Maybe you're moving from middle school to high school. That's a, that's a big jump. Maybe you're going from high school to college. That's an even bigger jump. Maybe you're going on a greater education. Maybe you're about to get your master's or your doctorates. Maybe uh, you're going through a business process. Maybe you started a small business or you have that idea in your mind and you're going through that process. Maybe you're going through a relational process. Maybe you started dating a woman, a, a guy started dating a girl, and a girl started dating a man. Maybe, maybe you're getting married in that whole process. But the process unites us. The process unites us because we're all going through it. 1 Corinthians 3, 2 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk to you as though you belonged to the world or as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you milk not solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger. Paul is saying that God wants to bring us from spiritual infancy to spiritual childhood and then to manhood. That's what Paul is trying to say in this verse. Paul is saying God wants to begin a process in you. God wants to begin something in you. Let's look at the process. Jeremiah 29 11 says this. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a hope and a future. See, the thing is that we use this verse commonly when we want to encourage someone. Hey, God has great plans for you. God has this for you. Or we're at the altar, we're praying for someone. You know, God has great plans for you. We even throw the verse up on our Instagram and our, our Facebooks right. and our Twitters because we want people to feel encouraged. We want people to feel good. But when the Lord brought me to this verse for this message, he, I looked at it completely different. When I looked at it, it says, for I know the plans I have for you. It said process to me. Number one, God has a plan for you. The Bible says in Hebrews 2, uh, 12 to God is the author. It also says that he has fashioned our days for us in Psalms 139. Come on. With every plan, there is a process. Come on. No builder is building a house without a plan. I remember when we were in the FLC, when we were about to do the extreme makeover, Prophet Paul, I mean Prophet Todd, took one of the rooms in the FLC and he had nothing but blueprints everywhere. Blueprints for every detail, for every place, for every uh, piece of wood, for every nail, for every screw. Plans are detailed. Plans have purpose. God has laid out a plan for your life, and God has shown you that through the process. We all love the beginning of something. See, I love the beginning. I love the beginning of an idea. It's fresh. It's new. It's exciting. Oh, man, I can't wait to do that. Oh, man, I can't wait to, to, till we get to that step. Oh, I can't wait for that. It's so exciting. And we love the ending. We see the plan come to completion. We see the beautiful picture that we saw in our heads. We see the beautiful end product. But we hate the middle. Come on. But we hate the middle. We hate the middle. The middle is where the work happens. The middle is where you sweat. The middle is uncertain and the middle is scary. God, are you there? Is this really the plan that you have for my life? Can't this be God? This can't be it, God, because I can't see you in it. Are you really with me in this plan, God? Are you really with me in the process? I call these things middle moments. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say middle moments. Middle, middle moments. moments. See, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 20 verse 9, Jeremiah was having a hard time speaking to the people of Israel. He was having a difficult time because he, 
Because he wanted them to hear the message of God, but they wouldn't listen to him. They wouldn't listen to him. And he said, God, I'm going to shut up. I'm not going to speak anymore. I'm not going to do this process thing that you want me to do. I'm not going to walk in the middle of this thing. But then Jeremiah changes his mind and he says, but when I shut up, it's like a fire in my bones. It's like a fire that's inside of me. It's exciting me. I can't do anything but speak your name, God. I can't do anything but scream your name, God. I can't do anything but speak the thing that you've given me to do, God. Jesus told the disciples in John 16.33, In this world you will suffer tribulation. In this world you will have sorrows and trials. But take heart because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. David says it in this way. He, he's having this conflict in himself. And he says, why are you troubled, oh my soul? Why are you downcast within me? Well, well I trust in the Lord. He's faithful. He's faithful to complete this thing inside of me. Middle moments, middle moments, middle moments. But when we're in the middle moment, I love that God always provides the answer before the situation happens. God always provides the answer before the trouble happens. If we look at the second part of the verse, we did the first part where it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. But the second part says, they are plans for good and not for disaster. They are plans for good and not for disaster. <laughs> The plans for good and not for the disaster. The process is for good. I'm not in this thing alone. I'm not in the storm alone. Come on now. Preach. I'm not in this storm alone. Right. I love the story of Peter when Jesus calls him out of the boat to walk on water. And many of us believe that the water was still, but the water wasn't still. It's a storm. It's trouble. It's That's turbulent. Right. There are waves Preach. going everywhere. Yeah. And the way Judas Smith pictures it, he says that Peter wasn't just walking on water. Peter was walking on waves. Peter was walking on waves. Walking on waves. And he's walking on waves, and he gets to this place where he starts to doubt. And his faith diminishes, and he starts sinking. And Jesus is right there in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the middle moment, in the midst of the process. God is right there, and he says, Peter, you might not have faith, but I'm right here with you. I'm right here with you. It is not for disaster, it is a promise. Even though it may hurt, even though you might not understand, uh -huh. but you know that God is working. Romans 8, 28 says that he works all things together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And purpose also means plan, it also means the process. He's working everything for good. He's working everything for good. I don't know if you're in a situation this morning, but God says, I'm turning it around for your good. Yeah. I'm in the middle. I'm working it out for you. I'm going to do it. Come on, come on, church. Come on, church. God is speaking in this place. God is speaking here. He's turning everything around. This moment, this process won't destroy me, but it will define who he is in me. Yes. Come on. It will define who he is in me. The process may not be good to me, but the process is good for me but the process is good for me. There's two more things in the verse. It says to give you a future. God wants to unravel his destiny for you through the process, your calling, your purpose, that ministry, that business, that thing that, that you were born to do for God. He wants to unravel that thing in the process. The middle defines the ending. How you walk into your calling and your purpose is defined by the process. It produces character in you. It produces fruit. Bridges is love. It, you become rooted. Psalms 1 says, like a tree planted by the river. What is destiny without the character to sustain it? Come on, that's a good word. What is character without the destiny that's to good. sustain it? I, I went with my wife to watch this movie, and um, I don't know if y'all know, but it's uh, called Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> anybody see it? Anybody want to see it? I love the movie. It was great. It was great. It was a great movie. Great movie. So there's a part, and we know that Tony Stark, Iron Man, he makes Spider-Man a suit. And there comes a, a certain piece or part in the movie where he finds out that the suit has training wheels on it. It's called the training wheels protocol. And so they disarm it and they take it out. And then Tony Stark comes to him later. He's like, give me back your suit because I know you took out the training wheels. Sometimes we want the destiny in life. We want the suit in life without going through the process or the training for the whole thing. That's a good word. For the whole thing. For the whole thing. For the whole thing. The process. And then there's a part where he says, that's good. But you know what, Iron Man, I'm, I'm nothing without this suit. 
And he said, if you're nothing without the suit, then you don't need it at all. Come on. See, Ooh. sometimes God won't give us things because we're not ready for them. That's we right. can't understand the responsibility. We can't understand the weight. And that's what Paul is trying to say. There's things that in your childhood you can't understand. David was called when he was 13, but he didn't become king till later. He couldn't understand the weight and the responsibility that it took to walk into kingdom. What's, what is destiny without the character to stay in? And then the, then the next piece of the verse says to give you hope. The process, God is building up hope and faith in you. God will show himself to be who he is, who he has called himself. In those middle moments when you're going through it, God will show himself strong. He will become your strength when you are weak. He will become your provider. Your faith is going to be lifted up. He's not a man that he should lie. His name is a strong tower. We can run into it. His promises are what? Yes and amen. We have this hope as an anchor, firm and secure. Firm and secure. I just feel hope and faith rising in this place. And I conclude with this. David Wagner said on Instagram, he said, every prophetic word, every prophetic word spoken is an invitation to the process. <laughs> what are those things that God has spoken over you? What are those things that God is saying to you? It's an invitation to the process. It's an invitation that you might not understand what you're going through in the moment. But know that God is sustaining you, that God is going to carry you, that God is doing something. Today, God is calling us to let go of childish things and to jump into the process to jump into the process. It's funny to me that Pastor Josh would speak about love in that verse. But if you look at it, it's funny to me that a verse of process would be found in a chapter of love. Yeah. It's a process of love. Yes. It's a love process. Come on now. <laughs> God is bringing you through with love. He's holding your hand through it. He's there with you in it. Maybe you came here today. Let's just bow our heads. Maybe you came here today you know what? You were going through one of those moments. You didn't know what was going on. 